The works of all truly capable minds are distinguished by a character of decision and definiteness, which means they are clear and free from obscurity. A while ago, we covered Schopenhauer's essay on literature, which focused more on what not to read than on what to read. There is a link to that video in the description. However, we can find some book recommendations in other essays. Hidden behind musings on the art of thinking for oneself, we can read which four novels Schopenhauer considers to be the very best. How does Schopenhauer evaluate a novel? Ever the insightful philosopher, he has strict criteria and standards. His preference is not based on subjective enjoyment. A novel will be of a high and noble order the more it represents the inner and the less it represents of outer life. And the ratio between the two will supply a means of judging any novel of whatever kind. Schopenhauer favors those novels who deal with the inner life of the protagonist, novels that lack action or have very little of it, novels that focus on thoughts, feelings and inner conflict. Skill consists in setting the inner life in motion with the smallest possible array of circumstance, for it is this inner life that really excites our interest. The business of the novelist is not to relate great events, but to make small ones interesting. Those familiar with Schopenhauer's philosophy can see the reasoning behind this. If a novelist can accurately depict the inner struggles of his characters, we feel ourselves at home. Because in Schopenhauer's philosophy, we share with all humans a common root. We recognize our own will and see it back reflected at us. This similarity is what piques our interest. We are not interested in the material world. The material world is the subject for science, not for a novel or a theater play. As always, Schopenhauer traces his opinions back to the main tenets of his philosophy. Like a cathedral with many entrances, we are always led back to the center, the world as will and representation. Knowing this, what are Schopenhauer's favorite novels? Those that feature very little action and focus on the inner life of the protagonists. Tristram Shandy has, indeed, as good as no action at all, and there is not much in La Nouvelle Héloïse and Wilhelm Meister. Even Don Quixote has relatively little, and what there is is very unimportant, and introduced merely for the sake of fun, and these four are the best of all existing novels. Schopenhauer, ever the polyglot, of course has to pick four books originally written in four different languages. First up, we have Tristram Shandy by Lawrence Stern. The full title of the work is The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy, Gentleman. The book is an autobiography of the fictional Tristram Shandy, and, as Schopenhauer points out, there is hardly any action in the novel at all. Famously, in this autobiography, we don't even reach the protagonist's birth until volume 3. Written in a humorous style, the central joke of the novel is that Tristram keeps getting distracted and can't focus on the task at hand, telling us about his life story. Instead, we have lengthy diatribes on philosophy, musings on everyday life, observations on military strategy, and physiognomy. Julie, ou la nouvelle Héloïse, by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, is more serious in tone. Arguably the best-selling book of the 18th century, Julie made Rousseau a literary superstar. The novel takes the form of letters exchanged between lovers, but the writing is drenched in philosophical thought. The novel was a sensation, with many readers unable to believe it was merely a work of fiction. The feelings and emotion described by Rousseau seemed too real to be simply invented, a strong testament to Schopenhauer's theory that in good fiction we see ourselves back reflected at us. Wilhelm Meister's Leerjahre by Goethe is Schopenhauer's third pick. The first question that pops up is why Schopenhauer would pick Wilhelm Meister's apprenticeship over the more famous and influential first novel of Goethe, The Sorrows of Young Werther. The answer is probably because in Wilhelm Meister, 
we can read lengthy discussions on the work of William Shakespeare, another favorite author of Schopenhauer's. Wilhelm Meister is a story of self-actualization. Wilhelm is tired of living his privileged bourgeois life of business. For this reason, it has been considered one of the first coming-of-age stories, as the prototypical example of the Bildungsroman. It's a story of introspection, disillusionment, and lengthy discussions of Shakespeare's Hamlet, all of which would have striked Schopenhauer's fancy. Lastly, of course, we have Don Quixote, one of the most influential books of all time, second most translated after the Bible, and arguably the first modern novel. As Schopenhauer points out, Don Quixote features more action than the other books in his list, but the action is introduced for fun and it is not important to the story at all. The book is about the delusion of Don Quixote and his great error in thinking he is living the life of a classic heroic knight while actually being a painfully average horseman. Don Quixote has been interpreted in a myriad of ways since it was written, but for Schopenhauer it represented a timeless tale of dealing with the inner world of a character that has fascinated Western culture for centuries. Consider putting all four of these books on your reading list. They are worthwhile cornerstone books that will stay with you for life, precisely because they depict life. Schopenhauer's selection includes tragic works, romantic works, and comedic works. Something for everybody. Have you read any of these books? And what did you think about them? Please tell us in the comments. To learn more about Schopenhauer's philosophy, we have an entire series dedicated to his main work. If you want more on Schopenhauer's views on literature specifically, we also have you covered. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.